In this video today, we're going to be using the Nano VNA here to measure SWR and return loss. Now, I've got the Nano VNA SAA-2N. This is 50 kilohertz to three gigahertz. You can get these off of Amazon and AliExpress as well. I'll put a link in the description below for them. Okay, first things first is we've got quite a few traces here and we don't actually need all of those to do a simple SWR uh, or return loss test. So we're gonna just tap the screen here and go up to display and we're gonna to go to trace. And you see here that there's various different traces in different colors. We're just gonna disable trace three and trace two for now. So we've got trace zero and trace one, one in the yellow and one in the blue. So with trace zero just selected, just go back. And you can see here, that the format is S11. Uh, there's a format here for S21, and there's a channel here for S11 reflected. Now that's what we want for return loss, so that's good, we can leave it as that, and we've got the log mag measurement over here, so that's gonna show us our return loss. Now if we wanna activate SWR, we'll put that on a separate trace. So let's go back here into trace, and we'll select trace one, which is the blue one, and what we want to do is you can see here that the channel has now reverted to S21. We want to just type, uh, tap on that to change it to S11 reflection. And then we'll go into our format. And rather than log mag, we're going to select SWR. And you can see here that now SWR has been selected at the top. So now that we've got our traces set up, we want to select our frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, measure my HF antenna here. There's the PL259. Uh, I'm going to measure the SWR or the return loss on the 10 meter band today. So what we want to do is we want to go to stimulus and we want to set a start frequency. So I'm going to start at the bottom of the band. I'm going to go uh, 28 megahertz here and we'll put a stop frequency of 29 megahertz. I'm just going to look at the SSB CWFT8 portion of the band and see how my antenna looks. So you can see at the bottom here we've got uh, 401 points, 28 megahertz start on the left and 29 megahertz here on the right. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to calibrate this. And we do that using the three calibrations here, the short, the load, and the open. So uh, because this is just a reflection measurement, we only have to do the calibration here on the S11 port, so we don't need to uh, worry about the other port. So they're the only calibrations that we have to do. Now just quickly, if you want to be reminded every single time that you need to calibrate, then have a look at my shirt store. You can get a calibrate, sweep, repeat shirt, which is all about the Nano v and I've got lots of other different designs in that shop too, so check it out. There is a link in the description below. So we're going to tap on calibrate here and calibrate again. Now, uh, actually before we do that, let's just go back and we're going to just do reset go back into calibrate, and the first one we need to do is open. So we're going to put that into the S11 port. We're gonna tap on open, this will take a little bit of time. You'll see that that's got a little tick now, so that's good to go, so we can undo that. The next one is going to be short. Tick box, okay, the last one is now going to be the load here, so we just screw that in as well. And these, this is the same whether you've got N connectors like I've got or the SMAs um, on the other version nano VNAs that you can get. It doesn't matter, they're all the same. We don't need to do the isolation and the through because we're not using the um, S21 port there. So let's just undo that and we'll hit done. Now it'll give us a option to save. And you can see here that I've actually got a couple of other save states for different um, calibrated frequency ranges. So I've been doing some measurements here on two meters, on 70 centimeters, six meters. Uh, there's an HF one there. There's actually another 10 meter one there that we've done. So I'm just gonna select the top one here and just overwrite the three to 30 megs. So that's uh, handy for if you want to recall it later on. So now we're ready to plug in my antenna. I've got a PL259 here and an N connector here. So I'm gonna to turn to my Uni Adapt kit. These are great for being able to move between the different genders um, at a pinch without having to need a million adapters. The SO239 here I've got, you just plug or screw this in temporarily and put the end connector on the end. So there we go, we've got our universal adapter, UniDapt kit. Just plug that in, 
plug in our antenna and this is what our sweep looks like. Now what we can do is we can move along with the buttons here on the top to move the marker. So we're looking here at the top at our return loss or our SWR. You can also uh, tap on the marker and you can drag using the stylus as well. The other thing you can do is you can tap here and you can go to marker and you'll see that there is a search function. So we can search for the maximum or we can search for the minimum. Now what we want to do is we want to look for the minimum, the dip here where the lowest SWR or the lowest return loss is. So we can tap that and we can see that that correlates to a frequency of 28.125 which is right down near the FT8 uh, section of the band. I think I optimized uh, this DX Commander antenna for around about that end of the band. Uh, we've got a 1.184 SWR minus 21 dB or 21.5 dB of return loss, which is good. Uh, I can use this to tune my antenna. I can go back, I can have a look and see what the sweep's doing. Um, I can also look over a wider frequency range as well. Now I've got a start frequency of three megahertz and a stop of 30. So you can see all of these little dips here where my antenna is resonant on the various different bands. And if I go back into my marker, I can see where the minimum is. Sits around 13.7 megahertz, so not quite. Uh, it's a little bit low there on 20 meters, but uh, what I can do is I can move this stylus up to here. Look at this, this is another large dip, 21.09 uh, megahertz, so on the 15 meter band. Now the other good thing is because of those save states that we've got, so if we go back into the main menu here and go recall, we can go back and recall any of these other ones. So if I wanna see what this antenna looks like on six meters, I don't really expect that it's gonna to look too good. I can still go and check those. So 50 to 54 megahertz. So what we do is we just go back here into our stimulus and we go start 50 and we go our stop of 54. And so now we're 50 to 54. Now, rather than having to go and recalibrate everything, we've actually got it saved in here already. So all we do is we go recall 50 to 54, and we've got our antenna plugged in, and you can see there that it's not, I mean, it's 1.5 to one here at the top end of uh, six meters. So I could use this probably on the FM portion, and then it gradually gets worse as we go up. So uh, that's a good way of being able to save your most common uh, frequencies that you would use uh, without having to recalibrate every single time. Now the Nano VNA is very versatile. It doesn't just do SWR. You can measure a whole range of different things. I've done a couple of videos on some of the use cases that I've used my Nano VNA for. They're in a playlist of videos over here. And if you could subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it using this button over here. I'm on a goal to try and reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year and it's free. All you have to do is just tap that button right there.